And I now have the honor to invite His Excellency Olson Frid, the Deputy Minister for International Development Cooperation of Sweden, to make a statement. You have the floor, sir. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, again we witness the devastating impact of natural disasters. Most recently the cyclones hitting Southeast Africa and India. We see the links between extreme, extreme weather events and climate change and we realize the need to enhance not only our responses to disasters but also our efforts to reduce the risks of their occurrence and to strengthen resilience. No one goes safe from the risk of disaster and disasters hit disproportionately. It is the poorest and most vulnerable who have suffered the most and who are most likely to be affected again. An obligation to leave no one behind must be backed up with concrete action. <coughs> Investments in resilience infrastructure and an eco ba ecosystem-based approach to disaster risk reduction is key to mitigating the impact of natural disasters. It would drastically reduce the financial cost of humanitarian responses to disasters, but more importantly, it would save lives. While much needs to be done in the short term, we also need to maintain a long-term perspective, making full use of the potential measures offered within the humanitarian development and peace-building nexus. The impact of disasters on security must not be neglected, and despite obvious challenges, more work on disaster risk reduction should be done in conflict settings. The Sendai framework gives us the direction, and Sweden is committed to meeting all global goals, and we file reports in UNDRR's monitoring system for the Sendai framework. Luckily, Sweden has been spared from major crises, but in the summer of 2018, Sweden was severely hit by wildfires. The economic loss from this, reported under Goal C, amounted to 568 million euros. Sweden stands ready to provide assistance to other countries in need. But last summer, when we were hit, for, uh, hit by fires, we needed help from outside, from outside our boundaries to handle this, and the EU mechanism proved to be very effective. We welcome the EU inif initiative of rescue, which we hope will prove to be an effective instrument going forward. As for progress in reaching target E, a national DRR strategy, Sweden already has a good legislation in place for the management of crisis, but is still in the need of a strategy that links the work with sustainable development and shows the importance of preventive work. Climate change means, among other things, that the incidence of extreme weather events will increase sharply. Today's societies are not adopted for this. It also means much longer fire risk season in the future. Climate change can also affect our security, including impact on water security, food production, sea level rise, and trade. We need more ecosystem and nature-based solutions to reduce the risks. This would also improve climate adaption, biodiversity, and reduce emissions. Disaster affects men and women differently. Therefore, a gender-sensitive planning and responses are needed. Women and young people need to be included in decision-making processes, and we should support the leadership of women and youth as agents of change which will provide benefits for the whole of society. And for adequate action, adequate data must also be available. An efficient cooperation and coordination between stakeholders will remain important and we should strive for a more extensive involvement of local actors. And Sweden look forward to the results of UNDRR's localization campaign. We're pleased to see that the UNDRR is a lean and an efficient organization. We're also pleased to see 
that UNDRR has taken work on gender parity seriously and been successful in reaching notable progress. The commendable efforts in this regard should continue. While doing an excellent job with the resources available, we are concerned that the UNDRR relies to 99% on voluntary contributions. Exploring innovative financing options is of importance, including local financing and private public investments. Sweden is proud to be the top bilateral donor to UNDRR, with an annual core contribution of 6.5 million euros. Our funding is fully flexible, allowing the organization to use the funding when and where it's needed the most. Unairmarked funding, particularly multi-year, has been found in many instances to have greater impact, especially when addressing social and environmental change agendas. It enables innovation, it provides important catalyst support, and we hope that more donors would step up to create a broader foundation for funding and there, thereby a broader mandate uh, and, and, and um, possibilities for the, for the global work on disaster risk reduction. Now, thank you.